What's up, everybody? What does it mean to be a stud outside linebacker in the NFL? That's a question that I'm going to explore with you guys a little bit today while I break down a uh, very underrated Bears linebacker, Pernell McPhee. Now, when you look at McPhee, just keep in mind that coming out of Mississippi State five years ago, he was not billed as a great athlete. He was pushing 280 pounds, ran in the four nines, only jumped 28 inches in the vertical, broad jumped only 8 foot 11, 4 6 in the shuttle. I mean, athletically, his numbers were terrible. And as a result, he went all the way down in the fifth round to the Ravens in 2011. However, what McPhee did have as a prospect was bulk, length, strength, and a hell of a motor. He played all over the defensive front as a rotational player for Baltimore both as a down lineman and as a linebacker, and he was rewarded with a modest contract to be a starter in Chicago last season, about $7.5 million a year. And in that first year as a full-time starter, he played phenomenally well. So well, in fact, that at this point, I would call him one of the best strong side linebackers in the league and a true stud at the position, but maybe not for the reasons you think. To me, Pernell McPhee is not a franchise pass rusher. He will never be a franchise pass rusher and his team-friendly price tag is a reflection of that. Now, some of you might be saying, what the hell, you can't be a stud outside linebacker and not be a franchise pass rusher, but I disagree. When I think about what it means to be a top-tier defensive player, it's not just about how many numbers you put up, it's about being a big enough threat to the offense that they have to change their game plan to work around you. And McPhee does that by being completely and utterly dominant against the run. That kind of impact is what makes somebody a true stud in this league. Bears defensive coordinator Vic Fangio likes his strong side edge defenders to have size and physicality above all else. He had the same kind of thing at San Francisco with Ahmad Brooks a few years back when the Niners defense was still insanely dominant. He wants that strong side backer, also known as a Sam backer, to set a hard edge and force everything back into the interior where the rest of the defense can clean it up. He knows that more often than not, tight ends on the strong side of the offensive formation are going to be the weak links when it comes to run blocking, just because they don't have the bulk that an offensive lineman has. So he's going to put the biggest, meanest guy he can find over those tight ends to break the offense's will. He wants them to entertain no thoughts of trying to spring someone to his edge, which then frees up inside linebackers to start cheating into other gaps and playing downhill and aggressive against any interior runs. That is assuming you have actually good inside linebackers on your team like Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman rather than Shea McClellan, but I digress. At least they have Danny Trevathan and Jarrell Freeman now in Chicago, which is an improvement. I think Fangio figured out pretty quickly last year that having a dominant edge defender didn't really mean much if he didn't have any talent inside to actually compliment him, hence the spending spree in free agency this last spring. But anyway, McPhee was brought in to fill this specific role set the tone on first and second down by beating the ever-loving shit out of tight ends on the line of scrimmage, and get the pass rushers on the squad into a favorable situation on third down so they can get after the quarterback. Just by him being on the field, Chicago can get itself into more third and six and third and sevens rather than third and two and third and three. Unfortunately for the Bears though, last year they didn't really have any good designated pass rushers on the team that could scream off that weak side edge when they did get into third and longs. Their secondary was also pretty up and down all year, so oftentimes they just couldn't get off the field on third down because they didn't have any closers to pair with the setup man in McPhee. If you're wondering why the Bears traded up to get Leonard Floyd in a draft class that was fairly weak in edge rushers, that's why. They did not have any. They needed their version of Alden Smith to complement their Ahmad Brooks. Every move they have made this offseason to acquire all of these new linebackers was to give Pernell McPhee some complementary talent to work with. Now, McPhee as a pass rusher, like I said, is not a franchise guy that is going to rack up 15 sacks and get an all-pro nod. But as a role player, I do think he can contribute on third down because he does have excellent length, excellent power, and above all else, excellent hand usage and an innate understanding of how to play the game. Tackles and tight ends alike tend to bend forward, drop their head, and lean into him because they're so concerned about his devastating bull rush. If he wants to, he can run over people. He's 280 with 34 and a half inch arms. If he wins the leverage battle with that kind of frame and strength, you're done. He wins, that's it. So tackles really try to anchor down hard when he's about to engage because they want to do everything they can to stop that power. But when you lean and drop your head, it makes it extremely easy for him to just sidestep and allay you with an arm over and blow right by on the way to the quarterback. 
a lot of times when he immediately got the corner on people, it's not because he's super quick or super fast off the ball. He just knows how blockers are going to play against him because they're afraid of his power, and he knows just what to do when he catches them leaning. That tells me he's a student of the game, and he knows the mental side of football. Punch, counter punch, repeat. And speaking of punches, my favorite part about McPhee's game is his hand usage. Because without great athleticism, you need to at least be able to bring something to the table to still be a productive pass rusher. And one of the things he's got in the absence of speed is technical perfection. Second quarter against the Raiders, I want you to pay attention to both the right tackles and McPhee's hands here as he's coming off that edge. An offensive tackle's hands, at least by most line coaches, are referred to as the high hand and the low hand. The high hand is the hand closest to the center, and the low hand is the hand that is furthest from the center. As a tackle, you never ever want to punch with both hands at the same time. Because if the rusher manages to neutralize both of your hands on the same punch simultaneously, you have no safety net to fall back on, and you have nothing left to get into the rusher's chest and stall him around the edge. You always punch with one hand first, in the tackle's case, the high hand, so that if and when the rusher neutralizes it, you've still got that low hand available to catch him right in the chest as he tries to dip through the corner. From there, theoretically, you would then just ride him around the back of the pocket. But if you use both your hands at the same time and you have nothing left when he neutralizes you, he'll just get over the top of your hip, get around the corner, and get an easy sack. Always punch with one hand. And that's exactly what the right tackle for the Raiders is doing here. Punch with the high hand first, keep the low hand free. McPhee, however, being the experienced student of the game that he is, has a brilliant counter move of his own. He knows that the low hand is coming as soon as he parries that first punch from the high hand, so he immediately follows it up with a second swipe that was timed perfectly to neutralize the follow-up punch from the low hand. This is some wax on, wax off type of shit right here. Perfect, perfect hand usage from McPhee. He can't finish the sack, but he does push Derek Carr forward straight into Eddie Goldman. Again, when he's got complimentary talent inside, his true value really shines through. Now, as good of an example as this was of his hand usage, it's also an example of McPhee's major flaw and why I believe he is not a consistent year in, year out, double digit sack kind of guy. Stiff hips, really stiff hips. And he's not particularly explosive either. When he gets the corner, it's really more about length, power, and just being a better technician than it is about raw physical ability. The problem with having stiff hips is that it makes it way, way more difficult to crank your body around the edge and flatten towards the quarterback as he's stepping up. If you don't have fluid hips, you can't dip as well, you can't bend, and you're not as balanced. That arcing path you take to the back of the pocket will always be wider if you can't bend because you just can't crank those hips around. And on this snap, that's what happened. McPhee could not get his hips all the way around and pointed at Carr so he couldn't flatten down and finish the sack himself. When McPhee went up against one of the best right tackles in the league, if not the best right tackle in the league, Green Bay's Brian Balaga, he was getting pancake like crazy because he lacked the fluidity and balance to get around the corner while dipping and ripping. He kept losing his balance because of that stiffness and falling to the ground. McPhee is great against bad or even average right tackles because he can use his technique and length to beat up on them, but when going against an equally proficient technician that also happens to be a good athlete, he's screwed because he's not a good athlete. He doesn't have a way to win. True franchise pass rushers, no matter who they are facing, always have a way to win. Franchise pass rushers can get a sack on anyone at any time. That's why they get paid absurd amounts of money. McPhee can't do that. His body just isn't built for it. He was put on this earth to destroy run games and be a role player. But you know what? That's okay. He's still a stud in my eyes because he knows his role and he plays it extraordinarily well. Now, just for reference, here's what a pass rusher of the caliber of Von Miller looks like when he's bending the edge. This sack is from the AFC Championship game. Just look how low he gets in his rip. That right there is what I'm referencing when I'm talking about bend. His body is literally bent at a 45 degree angle, and he's so incredibly flexible and so balanced. That's how he can flatten almost instantly. Pernell McPhee can't do that. He can't bend like that to turn his hips around the corner and immediately flatten his rush to the quarterback. Biomechanically, he is not built like Von Miller, and that's why he makes seven and a half million, while Von's gonna make well over twice that number. But again, you know what? That's okay, I'm fine with that because McPhee is still a Pro Bowl quality player in the role that he fills. 
He's a bona fide stud based on his value to the team. You cannot run at him because he'll shut down pretty much anyone at the line of scrimmage. And if you have a below average right tackle in pass protection, he's long enough, strong enough, and has good enough technique to at least get a couple sacks on them here and there as a complimentary pass rusher. You know, the Robin to somebody's Batman. He's tough, he has a great motor. I mean, this dude is born to be a Chicago Bear. This is a franchise that has a long history of striving to be the biggest bully on the block. And even if they weren't the quickest or the flashiest, they at least always tried to be the meanest. And McPhee fits that mantra perfectly. Great, great player. And despite his shortcomings, I really love watching him play the game because he does it the right way. Seriously, keep an eye on him in 2016. Really pay attention to how teams treat him in the run game, and you'll see just how important he is to that defense. He makes that whole unit better, a lot better. Anyway, that's all I got for now. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. I plan to keep releasing some videos on underrated players around the league as we keep kind of slogging through this endless offseason. If you'd like to donate to the channel to help me get a little bit closer to being able to do these full time, uh, at least that's my long term goal with this channel, you can do so on my Patreon account. Entirely up to you, of course, but if you feel like giving a little to the channel directly, that's an option. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the love and support you guys drop in the comments. Ideally, I'll have another video out sometime in the next couple of weeks on another Pro Bowl caliber player that really does not get enough love in the national media, Viking safety Harrison Smith. That dude is a one-man wrecking crew. He is insanely good. And I'll elaborate on that further in the next episode. You won't want to miss it. Trust me. The dude's insane. Until then, later.